I know what you're thinking right now. There's not enough Colin Cowherd in my life. <laughs> I hear it every day from my family. Listen, if you want more, subscribe. So let's bring in Mark Tressman. People in the sport uh, have great acknowledgement of what Mark Tressman has done through the years in building the confidence of young quarterbacks. So Mark, I'm going to run through the quarterbacks. And I want to start with Zach Wilson. And my initial interpretation of Zach was a little small, um, sometimes played the position, a little bit of a show-off, excellent arm, good movement. Uh, I do worry about, at times, um, this is a strange word to use, but his humility playing the position. That football, you are carrying a 3 to $4 billion franchise. Sometimes he was a little loose, in my opinion. Um, and the great ones, the Russell Wilsons, the Bradys, the Aaron Rodgers, we're seeing this with Justin Herbert. The great ones are not loose with the football. They understand the value of every possession. So my criticism is he's a little loose. Let's start with your reaction to that and what you see when you see the Jets, Zach Wilson. Um, although Zach won this game, he was the winning quarterback in the last game, I certainly don't think he's ready to be anointed. Um, I do respect from the last four weeks, his toughness and his resiliency. And he has shown some big playability, but you're exactly right. Um, over the time, he's shown uh, the ability not to manage games very well and understanding of situational football. Uh, he's all, he's, he, in all four games, he looked to, to make the home run and to hit the home run first. Even in this last game, he threw up a couple 50-50 balls that could have gone either way that got him a lot of yards. Uh, reckless with the football over the first three weeks, for sure. His drop back fundamentals are extremely sloppy and inconsistent. He overdropped the first two weeks. He was overdropping his protection at 10 and a half to 12 yards. And he really didn't show the athleticism that I expected to see. Um, I didn't look at him in college, but I had heard about his athleticism and I would just call it sufficient kind of, really in the Mac Jones, maybe slightly better than Mac Jones, but um, just sufficient escapability, but not being very accurate throwing on the run consistently. Um, some of the things that hurt him over the first few weeks, his protection was horrendous. Um, he took a bunch of hits, which goes to his resiliency and his toughness, um, but the protection was loose inside and he was taking a lot of hits. Secondly, his receiver's technique. Um, I'm not going to even go to their ability. Their depths, their techniques had gotten to improve. And the five interceptions that he'd thrown up to last week were a result of all of those things. But the things he can control, the looseness with the ball, recklessly throwing and not understanding the importance of being efficient. The number one job of a quarterback amidst everything, and I learned this from Steve Young, is to protect the football. And right. Protected on the snap, on the way to the on the way to the back, in the confines of the pocket, with position to throw and exiting the pocket, and he just did not do a very good job. You know, I've heard. Well, he watches a lot of Aaron Rodgers tape. Well, he's not Aaron Rodgers, and if he continues to be, you know, loses humility with that ball in his hand, he's going to hurt his football team. So he's got to listen to his coaches. Number one, he's got to take the candy store completions. He's got to respect the ball. And then we'll see if he's got any it factor because it does. There is a light that says this kid does have some it factor, but he needs to be more disciplined. Let's transition to Mac Jones, who is very accurate. Uh, you could see him getting the Patriots in and out of uh, plays. Um, you know, Nick Saban's got an NFL background as well. He and Belichick coached together in Cleveland, then his job in Miami. So, and he has hired NFL level coordinators. So Max running a pro system largely. Uh, I thought he was very efficient. Um, I don't see him with much escapability. Uh, I think he's fairly low ceiling. His arms. Okay. Certainly in your words, sufficient. Um, I guess my concern with him is New England has sh not shown an ability or an affinity to, uh, over the last four to five years, draft really high-end skill players. O-line, uh, D-line, linebackers, secondary, they've been very good at that. Uh, it, is a, it is a mostly, um, uh, I, I would say, average set of tight end and receiving talent. And I believe that Mac needs a certain level of player 
to elevate him uh, in that space. So I thought his game was very efficient. What I worry about Mac Jones, coach, is that because his ceiling's lower, he will realize his ceiling more quickly than a Josh Allen or a Kyler. He may realize it by week 13, but it could fool people into believing there's another level, and I'm just not sure there is with him. Yeah, Colin, I, I, it would be hard for me to disagree. I mean, Mac Jones is exactly who they thought he would be. Right. He's playing exactly the way Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniel knew he would. He's got tremendous ability to control the line of scrimmage, command the line of scrimmage prior to the, prior to the snap. He's got tremendous elite functional intelligence. He plays with a quiet mind. His footwork is so disciplined as a, you know, if you compare it right now to Zach Wilson, his drops under the gun in the center, his ball handling is excellent. He's got control. He played in a wet, with a wet football the other night. It really did seem to bother him. And Josh did a good job of, of calling plays accordingly. Josh McDaniels trusts him with the ball. He throw, he'll, he's not afraid to throw the ball in first, second, or third down anytime yes. with the gun um, because he trusts him to protect it. And that's really – that's really something that a, a coordinator, man, when you can call anything and know he's, he's going to protect the coordinator's call by making sure that ball is, is protected. The Patriots found a quarterback who plays the position the way the Patriots want him to play. He plays it just like, now, but it, I'm not saying, uh, please, they could, that he's not Tom Brady, and it's arguable he never will be, but he plays the game that yeah. way. See, the question I have Will he match up against Josh Allen for the next 10 years? Because that's the issue. <laughs> Let's pivot now to Justin Fields. Um, you know, Ohio State doesn't have this great lineage and history of putting guys in the NFL at quarterback. Some of that is because the Buckeyes generally have much better personnel than the rest of their conference. Uh, you know, you can run a drag route, give it to Paris Campbell. He's off to the races running past Purdue. And, you know, and the stats for the quarterback are, um, you know, through the roof. Um, there's a lot to like about Justin Fields. In 2021, he moves very well. He certainly has a capable, I'm not sure if it's a plus arm, but he's a capable player. Um, what I am noticing, he's holding the ball too long. I mean, he's probably having difficulty reading these NFL defenses. That's what it feels like to me. My interpretation is he's just holding the ball too long. There's a little confusion. Um, what do you see? What do you like? What are you noticing? Okay, so, you know, the first couple of games he played, it was a disaster. It was a disaster because he got the heck beat out of him. You know, he really didn't get a chance. Let me just tell you where I think he is. After 18 passes, a new play caller last week. Um, I was somewhat impressed with him, and I wasn't impressed with him as a college player, quite frankly. Um, I just, I, I just got concerned it's about his about his ability to translate to the NFL. And there's some coaches who think absolutely the opposite. That's the 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 price we pay when we decide to put our you know, sign off on a quarterback. But I was somewhat impressed with him on Sunday. But the play selection by Bill Lazor was really good. They ran the football. They they tried to do what I think most coordinators should do with first-year quarterbacks is run the ball, get him under center a little bit more, move him, and play action him with protection yeah. so he doesn't have to yeah. worry about hots. Right. So I thought the play selection over, he only threw four passes in the first quarter and two were explosive throws. I mean, big time, you know, NFL explosive throws and they were accurate. He's got tremendous quickness. You know, the only two runs he had were victory plays, taking a knee. So we didn't even see his explosiveness to make plays and extend plays, which we know he has. Um, I saw a little more upside in him than I've seen in Zach over four weeks in those 18 passes. There's just, more there. Um, I thought he managed the line of scrimmage well. Um, he was decisive. Again, he got some candy store completions too by Bill Lazor to get, let him, but he also, Bill Lazor took some shots and he made some plays with his arm up the edge and down the middle. Um, but here's the, the downside is he isn't protection conscious yet. There's free rushers coming at him. Now you can help him. You don't have to five and six man protect. You can seven man protect and nobody, you know, seven and eight man protection is not a panacea to get protection, but it helps eliminate hots and free rushers. And I, I will say this, Juan Castillo has done a much better job with the protection 
over the last two weeks because they were flawed a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's there's some light there for him. There's no doubt he should play in my mind. You draft these guys this high to play, and it's a coach's job to put them in a position to have some success and get them ready to win championships down the road. Okay, we go to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he's made a couple of throws uh, that vindicate his number one pick. Um, he's a big, strapping, mobile kid. They're running him more than I would prefer. Uh, Urban Meyer got a lot of heat for dra- drafting Travis ATN, but I think what Urban was trying to do is get a two running back system, which, by the way, you can see it with the Cowboys, Zeke, and Tony Pollard, two running backs. Uh, Dalvin Cook, I love him, but he's hurt a lot. Christian McCaffrey, I love him. He's hurt a lot. So I, I see what Urban did. He drafted a blocking tight end from Ohio State. He wanted Travis ATN and Robinson, and he wanted to limit tra- uh, Trevor Lawrence to 30 throws, not 40. He wanted this to be a very much a power offense, it looked like to me. And then Travis ATN gets hurt, and now everybody questions the judgment and the draft pick. But he's made some a couple of really special throws. I think he's a remarkable talent. Um when you watch him, is his protection good? Um, does he have much to work with? Do you like the scheming with him? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think you're, you're, you're on it again. I think in the first two weeks, it was really clear that Daryl, Daryl Bevel, you know, and Brian Shad, who I, I respect as really good play callers and coaches. I mean, he's got two of the best guys. They were calling plays as if he was, you know, Joe Namath. I mean, it's just, it, as if they had, they couldn't win without him, and they put him in some real precarious. They were just asking wow. way too much, and I think you see, you know, the, chronologically how that has changed over the last couple weeks. Because in the first few weeks, very poor decisions. That I mean, they were Zach Wilson like, you know, trying to get the home runs, five early interceptions. Most more of his interceptions were poor actually than Zach's were to some degree. Uh, during that time, he was careless with the ball. He was forcing his interceptions reckless. I mean, it's a repeat from Zach Wilson in the first two or three weeks. But on Thursday, just like you said, you know, now that now you started to see the guy that they drafted. Um, he got they got the ball out of his hands quickly. You know, one of the things I'm seeing coordinators do more this week. You know, just because Kurt Cousins can run all these movements to the left and Mayfield can, yeah. not everybody can. You know. And, uh, you know, they stopped calling a lot of these movements to the left. That, that, that's putting a, one arm behind a quarterback's back. Not everybody can do it, especially early on. They started calling more movements to the right, which made it easier to deliver the ball. And he played with a quiet mind. I mean, I love this guy. This guy's going to be a great player. I mean, he should be – he could exponentially grow like Herbert has in his second year – Herbert had a little more talent around him in his first year, I think, than just than, than Trevor does. But he could exponentially grow over the next couple of years, like Josh Allen and Brian Dable uh, and and his staff has done with Josh Allen. So, in summary, there tremendous upside, great poise, and he can run. There's no doubt about it. But he, he doesn't run like some of the runners do. You know, he's got to be able to protect. And he's, he's such a big man that, you know, they, you know, they got to protect their investment. There's a time to utilize the ride and decide, so to speak, where or the RPO keeps, you know, in, in crunch time. But I think they got to be careful with a guy with that, that big a body.